Hi, I'm Ingo from Rose Travels and this video is a Q&A session on the ILEO Bullet that we've had with Stefan Love from the ILEO team. Stefan is roasting coffee since many years and he has been one of the first people to work with the ILEO Bullet, so he's really experienced with the machine. Meanwhile, he's even working for the ILEO team, so there are not many people around that know that much about the ILEO Bullet Roaster. So you can look forward to a really interesting Q&A session where you will learn a lot about the ILEO Bullet. If you want to participate in a session like this and ask your questions, then go to our website roasttravels.com, look in the webinar session for one of the upcoming ILEO events and then directly register not to miss anything. But now I would say let's start and directly go into the Q&A session. Great, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for uh, having me on this uh, webinar. I'm very pleased. So I have a question. Uh, in in uh, how often do you play with the uh, with the air uh, volume uh, to uh, attend as uh, to em emphasize uh, sweetness in espresso? Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, emphasize sweetness. Sweetness to me comes especially after first crack if you prolong the development uh, phase uh, instead of just going by, you know, uh, a couple of minutes, maybe one one twenty whatever after first crack. Sweetness can also be improved if you prolong the, the um, Maillard phase just prior to first crack. But the airflow uh, in that connection can of course be used to moderate the heat appliance. So, so even though it's fast heating up and changing upwards with the induction heating, then of course the beans have a certain mass and will contain that that heating uh, so if you want to flatten out a little bit the only way you can do it is really to to uh, increase uh, the airflow mm. so so i mean that that that's <clears throat> that's actually one of the ideas uh with the bullet that that you can both uh um you can heat and you can uh you, you can regulate up and you can deregulate and you do that, of course, by, by taking away the heating appliance, but you can also use the airflow in all these uh, fine steps to modulate. Great, thank you. Mm. Uh, uh, am I allowed just one more question? Yes, that's fine. Cool. Okay. Um, and the, the drum speed, uh, do you use drum speed? Do you keep the yeah. same drum speed at all times or do yeah. you uh, yeah. use different uh, drum speeds? And I think that that question is pretty important uh, and it had, hasn't been emphasized in, in the manual or any of our writings, I think, since we just provide all the tools we think could be necessary for you guys to do whatever you want. Uh, seen from my perspective, uh, I keep my uh, drum speeds at, at D9 at maximum. There's not much difference between D8 and D9. Um, so to my liking, I just want to have maximum agitation, uh, no matter it's a small batch or, or uh, a, a, a big batch. Uh, the, the most important thing for me is to have uh, the, the, yeah, the more agitation in the beans, uh, the better. Um, okay. So, so you have even roast, right? Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Perfect. So Dario, you had a question? Yes, I have. Uh, thank you for taking your time uh, to, to answer our questions. Uh, my question is uh, pretty uh, current because the winter is coming, even uh, at least here in, in Europe or Switzerland. Yes. And since I'm roasting in my barn, so outside, and I'm, uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm um, protected from the weather, but I'm not protected from the temperatures. And I had last year some issues then when we had like two or three uh, degrees Celsius. 
I wasn't able to start oh, uh, the roast no. to heat it up. It was like the red light was blinking. Yes. And then yes. after several times of figuring out what to do, I just took it back to into the into my home and to 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 heat it up a little bit. And then sure. my experience was like with five or six degrees on the on the beam probe, I was able to to heat it up. Yes. So is that a so my, like two questions? Is that normal? Uh -huh. um, and if so, or do you have like recommendations, um, like like the maximum minimal temperatures you 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 um, you roast, or would you say like if it's like two or three degrees Celsius, you can roast, but you won't be you you won't have that good um, results. Another good question, actually questions, and they are related, of course. The the thing about roasting in general, uh, and now. I'm, kind of zooming away a little from the bullet, even though I'm not allowed from Ingo. <laughs> no, it's, it's by purpose because temperature is actually everything, not only inside the roaster, and that goes for any roaster. Uh, stability is everything. So, so, so that means um, as long as the bullet can start and it can only start I think we recommend like 10 degrees actually, but, but I think you can, you, it will actually work from five or six degrees Celsius. It's only a, then a matter of acclimat acclimatization. So, so, so you need probably to have the roaster preheating for much longer than, than when it says it's, it's ready because it cannot really sense the outside room temperature. So, so in order to, 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 to give it enough energy and let that energy <clears throat> disperse into all the, the small uh, <laughs> heat containing elements in, in the roaster, the better. So having said that, you need to have it above like eight, 10 degrees uh, before you can start it. And what I usually say is uh, in a situation like yours, you have to then bring it into your home and then take it out. You, you can do that. I mean, uh, it's heavy, but it's 12 kilo. <laughs> but, but, but another thing around the question is actually, okay, so where do you, you keep your beans, uh, keep your green beans? And, and uh, if those beans will be like five or 10 or even, 12 degrees compared to summertime where you have 25 or 30 degrees, there's a, a, a huge difference in, in roast time than anything else equal because those beans will actually contain much more energy before they reach the same, the same level, right? So, yeah. So I guess I said enough, uh, but, but temperature is really... Uh, uh, the parameter that is important. Then comes humidity and other parameters like if you, you if you are outside in a windy weather, that will also take away heat from uh, from the drum. Maybe even more than you think of because uh, uh, the roaster is not a closed system. Well, yeah. I try to keep my beans always in the same te there are yeah. 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 temperature. Yeah. But I also figured that in winter, even though the, the roaster is heated up for a long time, uh -huh. the curve is different in, in sure. to summer, even though it's the same, the same bean, same amount, same right. heating. Right. So there is a difference, but I think it's a good recommendation just to wait longer to, to heat up all the yeah. different parts. Yes. Yeah. So then uh, Andreas has, a, has another question as well. Yeah. Thank you, Iko. And uh, hello, Stephen. Uh, Hi, Andreas. Nice, to, nice talking with you here, and thank you for your time. Uh, actually, I have two questions, and uh, they they related with Dario's uh, questions. Uh -huh. uh, actually, my first one is uh, regarding the preheating of, uh, of Helio. Uh, of course, we know that the first and the second parts, every time we are roasting, are quite different from the third and the fourth and extra. Ah, so awesome. preheating is quite significant for starting with a good results in the first and second parts. Uh, also, even Elio says that bullet is ready. Actually, it's good to prolong our uh, preheat. Uh, I heard from Rod Hoss in uh, one in, in another webinar. 
he proposed that in case that I need in the first batch to preheat the bullet for example, 150 Celsius degrees, uh, increase the preheating to 170, to 18 Celsius degrees uh, higher, stay there for 20 minutes, then lower the temperature, and after 10 or 15 minutes, start roasting. Uh, do you have any comments on this or other recommendations? Yeah, it's, uh... I, I, I think my recommendation would really be to prolong the preheating application. If, if you start higher, I think that that is okay. And you can then go back and, and then let it, let it uh, stabilize on, on the uh, preferred preheating temperature. The only thing is that, that, that if, you, if you then start higher to in, order, in order to kind of boost the, uh, the the heating system it it, 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 it might be that that you you then don't know exactly so what are the timing for it to go down again but but I totally agree that that it's it's simply too bad to miss the first batch I mean if you are in production setting uh, <laughs> You don't like to to throw out the beans, so so you need to get around it somehow. What I usually do is that I that I preheat to the same temperature because that is in my recipe, but then I I I, I give the heating a little bit longer. I mean, I, I what I do is that I have my recipe for my profile, but I also have a golden standard profile as an overlay. So you can actually have both, so so you can see the curve that you want to mimic, and, uh, and 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 that you will easily see if you are below or you are under, and you can just adjust on the go. So you don't need to okay. kind of over preheat in the beginning. Okay. Okay. I see mm. your point. Mm. And uh, thank you. And my second question is. Uh, I also roast in my garage, so I always roast in winter or in summer with ambient temperature. And yes. that means that because I'm an old owner of a bullet for just one year, and until now, I've roasted from 7 Celsius degrees until up to 38 ambient yeah. temperature. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, my, my approach was for, for a specific uh, uh, coffee. I have a profile that I believe that it is the, the optimum one according to my preference. In order to follow the specific profile in winter and in summer, I just playing with the preheat temperature. When mm. it is cold outside, my preheat is 10 or 15 uh, Celsius degrees lower, uh, higher, sorry. Mm -hmm. During the summer, I I decrease the preheating temperature, and again, I'm trying to approach my profile. Uh, do you agree with this approach? Do you have any other recommendations? Again, should I change the parameters during roasting instead of preheating? Well, I think I think what what's you always have to try and look from the bean perspective. What is it that the single coffee bean is experiencing during winter time and during summer? So, so all this about the storage temperature, of course, needs to be the same. But, but uh, 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 roasting in, in summertime is, of course, where you also take in preheated air from, from the surroundings because you said it's almost 40 degrees. And in wintertime, it's much cooler. So, so of course, you have to ad adapt to that. The best thing would, of course, be to have a heat pump in, in, your, in your setting so, so that you, the uh, room temperature would be the same all the year round. That is actually what I, I have in my, in my setting. So I'm a little bit lucky there. I don't have to think about it. But, but I think you are right. You, you can probably adjust by preheating, but when the, the roast goes, you also have to adjust for, for, for those maybe 30 degrees difference in the air intake because it's so different if you can, can follow me. So, so probably it's not enough only to preheat a little differently, uh, uh, but um, yeah. 
and 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 this is where I also have to say, well, you have to experiment with it. Uh, that might be that 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 I have some guidance, or other people here on the board have, but. Um, it's, it's pretty much about just do it and see what happens and note and try and only uh, change one parameter at a time so you know where you are. I have a question in the chat that is a bit related to that. Um, and the question is, is there an indication or could you tell how much um, energy or heat is delivered for each P settings and also the flow rates for the F settings? Yeah, the flow rate, uh, well, uh, Actually, we, I can't recall that we have ever tried to calculate the flow rate because the flow rate is, is, uh, is uh, linked to where you measure. I mean, it's easier in a tube because then you just you know, find out, okay, so you move so many liters per, per minute, but in a roaster, it really depends on where you are. And, and so instead we have related it to these rounds per minute that we calibrate the, uh, the uh, fan speed to. Um, and probably uh, you guys have, have seen that in the manual that, that, that it's uh, a good thing from time to time to calibrate uh, the system in order to have the consistency from, from uh, roast to roast. Um, so, so airflow is, uh, is actually not easy to, to determine. We have found that, that with the calibration of, of the motor rounds per minute, uh, that is uh, the, the closest we can come to, to, to uh, max speed and minimum speed. And then we have those 10 steps in between. Um, with energy, yeah. Uh, I think we, we, uh, we say like 350 watts between every step P setting. So we end up with the uh, 155, 1550 watt on, on, on P9 on a version two bullet. On a version one bullet, it's uh, 1380 or something nominal. But then there will be variations on uh, from bullet to bullet. Yeah, it's more or less linear than uh, the steps between the pieces. Yeah, and we have we have tried to 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 get there, uh, but it's mm. not easy actually with induction heating. Okay. Yep. So then, uh, Stefan has another question. Yeah. Right. Um, regarding the uh, airflow stuff, and, uh, yes. I've got a setup which uh, I have, uh, which was suggested also in the manuals with uh, separating the uh, suction from, from the bullet itself. That works pretty well, actually. Uh -huh. What I've been noticing is when I'm doing back to back roasting several times, um, and uh, I've noticed that the airflow decreases whenever a lot of chuff is, is, is building up. Yes, of course, I have to clean up in, in between. Yep. And uh, several people in the, also, in the, <clears throat> also in the forum were talking about some idea regarding something like a cyclone or something that hmm. eases the cleaning in between. Yeah. Something where I could just push the button yeah. drain it and, yeah. and, and continue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some, is something planned in, in that regard? <laughs> yeah, yeah, at least it has been discussed a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I can tell you before I, I went into the company, I was really uh, modding a lot on, on the, my bullets. I have two bullets. Mm -hmm. And so I even tried to, to build in a cyclone into the chaff box, uh, a, a small mm -hmm. one. It was an uh, aluminum thing. Um, mm -hmm. But the thing is, it didn't work. And uh, I couldn't understand why it wasn't working. But then I found out, well, the, the airflow is simply too, too low. The spare speed through the cyclone was too little. And that's why it didn't work. So, so I know people around the world that actually had external cyclones uh, connected mm -hmm. to the bullet. What they then do is then that they, they actually remove the chaff filter. It's, it's not really a thing we recommend, but, mm -hmm. but 
because then you, you have all the chaff and, and, and oily uh, dust and, and so forth going through with the impeller. But anyhow, it's then a matter of uh, increasing the maintenance mm -hmm. uh, frequency. But so, so, so yeah, uh, probably we'll never have a cyclone inside the building mm. because there's simply yeah. no space for it and the maybe, dynamics maybe. Is, not, is not right not okay so 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 but 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 i face the same issue uh doing back-to-back -back roasts what i do then is uh, that i that i actually quickly take off the chaff box uh when i preheat and uh, then do the the vacuum cleaning uh quickly but but the filter itself, especially if if you have a, a dark roast session, will actually clog eventually after like yeah it really depends but but uh, let's say mm. five six kilos, and even though it looks I, I have the box here and take out the filter here so so even though it might look look fine and you brush it off because that's a very quick way of doing it actually. It, it, it kind of restrict air, even though you can't really see it. If you hold it up to, to, to a light and, and you can see your hands through, then That's it's exactly okay. Right. But, but, but it might be that you think, okay, now it's clean, but it's actually restricted the air by, by maybe 20, 30%. And that's uh -huh. probably what you experience. Yeah, so, it's a, yeah. so it's very important actually to have them and maybe we should actually deliver like two or three uh, uh, filters with every bullet because to, to mm -hmm. kind of push people to actually change yeah. the filter instead of trying to brush it off yeah, for a long yeah. time. That makes sense. But what, you, what we're talking regarding an, 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 a, a vacuum cleaner or something like that, and I've, I've often tried, tried that, but I exactly had that effect with, with, with a mesh. And I was thinking about, would, wouldn't there be, in a, for, for example, such, something like an, an ash vacuum cleaner where you have some sort of adapter, put it, put it on, switch it on, suck it off. But as you said, the mesh is clogging yeah. anything any anything yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking about it, just just to get a little bit a little bit smoother on there but but please please uh keep thinking keep coming up with ideas and and we actually have a special section don't don't we on on roast world to actually Ooh. share those ideas yeah uh, um, i can't i can't promise that 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 we'll read it uh, the minute you write it but but uh, mm -hmm. usually we get about those places and really yeah uh, we we like to get those ideas so cool yep mm -hmm. thanks so much great you're welcome stefan i have a question from thomas and he's asking about the capacity so he says the max capacity is one yes. kilo yes. so what is your recommendation would you recommend um, to use the full capacity or less green beans so is there kind of a range or a capacity where yeah. you can get the best results? It's a very good uh, question. And uh, again, if we zoom out a little bit on, on, on bigger roasters, what you usually say is that, that don't fill it more than 80% of the max capacity. Um, with the bullet, it's a, it's a little bit different. Um, it can actually be filled more than one kilo. Uh, to be frank, I have a special tuned induction module that can give uh, two kilowatts because we have a, a, a this uh, a, a longevity uh, testing in one of my uh, bullets and I charge 1.2 kilo but but that's only possible because I can preheat to the maximum 310 degrees without any issues and I can uh, give it a lot of energy so so I finish the roast anyway uh, in like 10 minutes 11 minutes um, Having said that, you, you limit your controllability with the bullet if you fill it up with one kilo. So you don't have any uh, headroom left when you use one kilo. That means uh, probably it's okay uh, if you are used to, to do one kilo roasts, but there's no way you can uh, change the roast while you are you are roasting you, you need to know exactly so this bean i have here can be done in like 12 minutes or or, or whatever i would never roast light roasts 
in one kilo in the bullet because there you really need a, need a lot of momentum in the beginning and you would like a first crack a little bit earlier and have very good control with airflow and everything uh, during the development phase after first crack. So, I mean, it really depends on, on the usage. If you are an espresso roaster entirely and having, uh, you know, um, a low grown beans as, as a good uh, Brazil bean, for example, with a little Colombia, whatever to, to blend for, for a good uh, espresso, you probably don't care that much about the if it's very precise at first crack and, and how long you need to, to continue until you get the right color of the bean. So so there you can probably uh, go the full full batch. So again, it's, it's not a yes or no uh, to that question. Uh, having said all this, uh, this summer where we had a really uh, tough, hot summer, we had a lot of issues with people used to be roasting full batch with a, a lot of heat appliance and not that much airflow. And what happens was for, for many roasters that, that the, the roaster overheated. And, and uh, we have really seen that this summer because we, we, uh, we had this hot weather. So, so again, um, it depends. And uh, we are we are going all the way to the limit if you go for the full batch. When it comes to overheating, there was a question in the chat as well, and mm -hmm. he says um, because you know Morton has um, his recommendation yes. and he uses quite high preheating temperatures of around yes. three hundred ten. Yes. And um, in the chat, he Mike asked. Um, he says he gets a preheating an overheating error when he's preheating yep. to that yep. temperatures. Can you say, yeah. is, is this normal or is there a problem with this well, machine? Well, I actually have those discussions with Morton uh, at the moment, because uh, probably we should have uh, said that before the summer, if we knew that that, that it would be so hot, uh, that, that he might go a little bit lower. The thing is that, that Morton is doing a very fine job trying to characterize, characterize the bullets so, so that every participant know exactly what can the bullet do for me and then you can go back in smaller batch sizes uh, because then you know exactly what happens if you take full heating and full batch and and so the 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 thing is you need to be more precise with the with the cleanliness of your ibts uh, because if if it's only slightly dirty the, the, the infrared uh, temperature sensor, then you will actually cheat the bullet to think that it's not as hot as it actually is. So it's trying to raise the temperature even higher. So for example, the 310 degrees preheating with a little dirty IAPTS could actually easily be 320 degrees or maybe even higher. And, and, and then, of course, all the, the precautions uh, inside the electronics will kick in uh, much earlier. That is the typical situation we see that uh, it all, it all, it's all a matter of, of uh, maintenance to the, to the IBTS, which needs to be maintained much uh, more frequent if you dark roast and, and, and so forth. So it's, unfortunately, it's not a, 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 like an oven where you have this pyrolysis snap uh, button that, that, yeah, that you can actually just heat it up to like 500 degrees and it, it's completely clean afterwards. <laughs> you cannot do that. Which yeah. sensor is actually then um, leading to the overheating error? Is it the BT probe or is there a sensor no, in the no. electronics? No, it's a sensor in the electronics. So, so yeah. there's nothing, I mean, it, it's some of the sensors that we need to put in place in order to have it CE marked. So there's many rules and regulations around overheating. And uh, actually some of the first boards, uh, it might be of interest to some of you guys also, if you had, had one of the first bullets from, from uh, just around the CE marking, um, is that, that the, the limit, temperature limit, 
of one of the switches there was actually uh, 10 degrees lower than, than we soon after found out we had to raise it uh, because we were, we were too cautious. And then we had areas that, that uh, didn't really mean anything. Mario had a question in the chat and he asked about the chuff that gets stuck in the front between the front plate and the drum. Yes. And um, sometimes even during roasting, do you recommend right. removing this even during the roast because it could have an impact on the airflow? Yeah. I definitely do not recommend that you try to remove it during the roast because there is a risk that the door will open. And as soon as the door opens just a little bit, then it's too late then more beans will get stuck and, and you cannot close the door again. So, so, so the idea here is that if you have a lot of chaff in the front, I mean, really it's building up, then probably it's because you are having a too low airflow. You need some airflow in the roaster in order to, to, to pull the chaff to the end and then into the filter. Uh, I, I, I often have uh, support cases where, where people cannot understand that. Uh, but when they realize that, that the airflow was almost zero because maybe they put F1 or F2, but since the, the, uh, the, the filler basket was not completely clean, that actually equal like no airflow. And then you have chaff all over the place and you will also have a lot in the front. Having said that, naturals, uh, natural greens uh, have a lot more chaff, as many of you probably know. Washed beans, not so much. Just, so. just maybe, uh -huh. which maybe also interesting because I had a lot of chaff going outside yeah. uh, of, the, of the of the roast during roasting, and then I just I just um, removed one of this um, of this plate so that the drum is more is nearer to the to the door but you are absolutely right about that I, that I, 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 but still uh, during my uh, just roasted uh, an hour ago and i still have this chaff stuck between yeah. and if i go from the downside with with a stick or something or with with a q-tip uh, and i don't there isn't the possibility to open the door is to me it's not that high so, but just, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm whatever whatever works for you. I yeah. mean that 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 that's fine. I, I if just you say that does, doesn't have an impact on the airflow. I don't mind. I, just I don't. I don't it. think it has a lot of impact. The, the more, the more impact because it's it's pulling air from from many places. Actually, it's not only pulling air from the front. The front, the, the gap there is actually there by purpose because that was the only way by this design concept that we could get rid of some of the, the chaffs that would uh, otherwise go in and, 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 and you know, uh, obstruct the rotations and whatnot. So, so the, the, the idea is to have the drum as close to the front plate as, as possible. That should actually be adjusted by factory, but, but that's also why we, we give more shims with the toolkit, so you can actually adjust that a little bit. And when it gets uh, uh, worn a little or, or, or has, has run like one year, then it might need uh, another adjustment. So that's one thing, but, but, but you, you should always expect, uh, especially from naturals, that, that they will uh, end up in your basket. And, and yeah, that's, we would love to not have it, but, but we have it and uh, I think we'll, we'll have to live with it. <laughs> At least they get sorted out when, when you cool the beans, but not if you have a lot there, then you probably have to, to look for the cause. Yeah. Thank you. Huh? There was a question from Bo. Uh, okay, uh, I almost think it was answered in the discussion, but um, another question uh, popped up in my head. It is about the, the IPTS sensor on the version 2 bullet. Does it uh, need to be cleaned every now and then, or is it only on the version 1? Yeah, yeah. I don't know how many version 1 users we have on, on this webinar, but, but anyhow, the version 1 had a, a small round window, uh, exactly the same place as, as uh, the newer uh, IPTS. 
there was a glass in front of, and it was probably the most expensive single piece of the bullet. It was extremely expensive uh, coating that glass piece had because it, it needed to protect the sensor behind it from the heating. Uh, and because this glass surface was, was aligned with, with the rest of the front, it uh, of course got, got uh, a lot of debris and, and, and then whatnot from the coffee and needed to be cleaned uh, pretty often. Then on version two, we used actually the same infrared sensor itself, but now there's a hole in front of it because we now have a, a small fan behind it. So pushing a little air into the drum all the time, having a kind of overpressure there always, actually protect the sensor from, from overheating. And since uh, this glass and the coating was not, not there anymore, we had to increase the, uh, the setting of the preheating quite a lot. So those of you that actually updated your version one to 1.5 or even version two with, with this new IBTS, you, you probably figure out that the preheating temperature had to be raised quite a lot from version one to version two. Uh, but again, the idea was that this air stream from the sensor and into the roaster would always make sure that you didn't have any, any uh, dust or any uh, things going, going to, the, to the sensor, but it happens anyway. It's only a matter of time. So in my case, I, I roast medium roast and light roasts. I clean my IBTS sensor every four months like that. Uh, I know a lot of roasters that roast uh, dark Italian roasts. They have to clean it every month. Uh, so, so, it's, so, so it needs to be cleaned. The, the, the good thing about it is if you take off the front, it's just a matter of having a little uh, cotton pin and you just touch it very briefly. Maybe it was some alcohol, but, but, but even, even that is not needed all the time. So, so yes, that was a long answer. Uh, you need to clean it. It's only a matter of time. Then you, you, you'll have to do it. And you can actually see it on your curves uh, in, in rose time that the uh, Bean temperature curve, the one, the, the purple one, right? If you didn't change the color, uh, compared to the IBTS, will actually narrow in. It will move up because that is actually indicating that now the it, it, it's more heated than it should be, and the bean temperature will then rise. So they get closer, and 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 they can even cross uh, before first crack. And that's a clear sign that the IBTS is, is uh, dusty. Thank, thank you so much for the answer. Huh? And uh, there was one question. Can you take off the chaff filter for cleaning during the preheating of the roaster? The thing is, uh, on the newer models of a bullet, uh, you have a little switch there, making sure that the chaff box is actually on. That's because we will not like people to, to have their fingers cut from, from the impeller. If you do it very briefly, the bullet will start beeping. But if you, again, do it quickly, then you can actually uh, uh, put it back again and it will stop and it will continue preheating. It's not by it's not by uh, uh, any guidance or on the manual, but that is what you can do if you do back to back roasts. Otherwise, you'll have to stop the the back to back roasting and, and simply have a little pause where you where you uh, go into to, to cool mode and, and do whatever you need to do, uh, emptying the chaff box and then quickly go back to roasting again. There's another question when it comes to the between batch protocol. Um, is there a recommendation from you for the between batch protocol in order to have a consistent one? And um, what is the quickest way to cool down the bullet um, with consistency between the batches? 
So, so if you do not invoke the back-to-back -back roast feature where you press F1 uh, while you are in cool mode, so you go directly straight into to the next preheating. If that is not what you're doing, but you but you simply stop your roasts and then you start preheating again. Compare that to a back-to-back -back roast where you actually press the F1 while cooling and then adjust the new preheating temperature and, and then start uh, preheating. It's actually the same, the same thing you are doing. We just allow with the back-to-back -back feature, the F1 press, we actually allow the beans to cool while you actually preheat for the next roast. Um, and, and in that, in that uh, situation, we of course preserve some energy in, in the bullet that would otherwise disappear from the bullet and you have to preheat it even more for next roast. Having said that, if you, for example, have a uh, high preheat temperature like, like 305, for, for a full batch roast. And next back to back roast would then be like 600 gram. Then you would like to, to turn down the preheat to like uh, 260 uh, degrees. The bullet will then uh, stop the heating completely because now it's too high and it will go down, 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 and it will go a little bit below and then it go up again. So, so the bullet is actually trying to follow a kind of heat equilibrium protocol between those batches, even though it's back to back. The, the normal back to back situation is of course that you have the same roast again and again and again, and then you don't change anything. But even if you change uh, for a different bean and a different batch size, the bullet should actually be able to adjust and, and, and so when it says charge, it's actually measuring the bean probe, the BT probe, the, the light purple one. So, so when it's uh, more or less level, uh, that is when, when it says, okay, now it's not raising and it's not falling. So now it's ready. And, and that depends of course uh, on the temperature difference between the two batches. Next question is then uh, on roast profiles. And um, it is when roasting for a natural Ethiopian to highlight, you know, when, when you want to roast, um, when you want to highlight more floral or uh, yes. fruity aspects. Yeah. Um, what you, would you recommend? Um, what time to first crack would you recommend? Would you stick to nine minutes or be quicker no. and uh, to go towards 7.5 minutes or something like that? Yeah, it would definitely go down to seven and a half. Again, this is this is my own personal uh, experience with this. Um, we all probably know what those floral notes is when we have tasted it just once, <laughs> because they are, they are so fantastic. Um, the thing is, they are so fantastic because they 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 easily disappear. So what is important when you roast for, for, for having those notes? First of all, the bean needs to, to be capable of delivering those flavors, of course. Uh, but, but what you want to do is to, 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 to have, your, have enough momentum in the beginning, i.e. having uh, enough energy, a, a pretty high uh, rate of rise in the beginning. But then you want to want to level it out so you have first crack around around yeah seven seven and a half uh, and and then it's all about what happens after that and usually people will wait far too long so so what you 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 depending on the beans would want is to have like well maybe around one minute after first crack maybe even less uh, and, and that depends, of course, on a copying. So, so never just try one shot and, and see what happens. And then uh, next week, try another. Do successive uh, roasts with different, different development times and see what happens. But, but it's, it's, uh, 
without doubt uh, a, a big issue if you if you don't lower your your um, development time because then you you simply blow it away those fine notes they, they are the first to leave the bean the next question is on the um, current on on the limit that is fixed to 100 kilos a month in order to keep the warranty yeah. so where is it coming from and why why is it limited to that uh, yes. number yes it's a very good question and it's actually one of those questions uh, that uh, we have discussed internally also because what we see in the marketplace is that that fortunately i would say the bullet is really capable of doing uh, high volume production if you maintain and if you maintain uh, at the right frequency um, what we did in the beginning was that we didn't have much experience with what are the limits but what we knew was that using uh, the different standard components inside the bullet there is a, a life expectancy on those uh, components. There's a, a measure called the mean time between failures, MBTS. And it's, it's, um, it's actually all about, you know, we need to have some, some rules, uh, anything else equal, or if you want to exceed them, then you will have to increase your, 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 um, your maintenance frequency instead. And so, yeah, it wasn't a, a yay or a no <laughs> to more or less than, than 100 kilo, but, but, but it's probably something we'll have to look into uh, whether what is the conditions if, you, if we want to increase it. Having said all that on warranty, I think we never let anybody down yet. I mean, uh, so we really stick to having happy roasters out there. But of course, if you are not maintaining your, your bullet and just rolls away and suddenly crash, I mean, then, then of course there's, there's no warranty. Yeah, I, I don't know whether that's enough answer <laughs> to the question. I think that, that that's fine. Otherwise uh, the user yeah. can then uh, yeah. ask another question according to that. Sure. Um, and the next one is about automation. So um, he has developed some beautiful profiles in manual mode and then created recipes from that. But when he's using the recipe mode or the auto automation mode, he doesn't get the same results. No. Have you get any advice or any tips or tricks and on how this is uh, going to work better with, with these recipes? Yeah, I, I really appreciate that. that uh that the uh, that the guy is actually trying to do recipes because I think a lot of us should do recipes much more because it's it's really a fantastic tool to to um, to actually implement your roasting strategy and probably what happens is if 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 he um, just press the button create a recipe out of the profile. I don't know whether that is uh, the issue here. Then you'll get a lot of uh, notes in, in the, you get a lot of lines in, in the recipe. And, 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 and actually in a good recipe, you need only like four, five, six lines. I mean, time marks or temperature marks where you wanna change the airflow or the heat application. Uh, less is better actually uh it's amazing how 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 simple you can you can do a roast and have a fantastic coffee out of it so so i don't know whether whether uh, he just pressed this button and and have a lot of lines the idea is actually that 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 the recipe creator automatic creator uh will will make uh every time it sees a slight difference it will uh, make a new line. So what you will have to do as a recipe creator is actually to remove all the unnecessary lines. 
so you only have you know uh, okay so so when I reach like uh, 140 Celsius degrees then then okay so maybe I, I raise the the fan speed a little bit because now now the the humidity needs to go out and and so forth going close to first crack then again you need to change things in order for for the bean mass uh, not to explode <laughs> so yeah I don't know maybe. Maybe Tobias, you can you can then add if the um, curves are different or is if the taste if the is different because uh, something that I experience with this um, with this mode is related to what Stefan asked before when it comes to the in between batch protocol. And I think this automation in my experience works quite well, but you have to be really 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 um, um, similar in 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 the charge temperature in the amount of beans in the temperature of the beans that is being put in so you have to use the same beans same temperature same amounts in best case also like the, the, no, no it must must be the same charge temperature so you have to be really really um concentrated and then in my experience that the, the, these recipe modes is working really really well and, and the curves are more or less similar as two two more tools that that should be used much more we have this little trier in the bullet that actually allows you to to sniff those uh different chemical reactions that is actually happening in the bean so not everything is showing in the curve and that's probably uh one issue that we have maybe promoted too much that that as long as the curve is like this everything is good and, and then i'm sorry to say you can you can never you can never have it have it like that and even probably as uh, tobias is alluding to uh, uh, two similar curves should actually taste the same but they don't and 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 probably uh, you would be aware of this if, if the trial was used just prior to first crack to find out whether those acidity uh, 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 smells will come out a little bit before or after. They, they tend to come just before first crack. But, but again, there's another thing, and that's the color of the beans. And those of you that actually followed uh, Orton Munchau's courses, uh, have made a lot of research on this saying that that actually uh if you could quantify the taste of coffee then uh, by by research he found out that that around 80 percent i think or maybe 70 80 percent of the smell of the coffee is actually really closely related to the color so having a color meter uh i know they are extremely expensive uh, there is some cheaper ones, but uh, then you have to ground uh, the coffee in order to measure the color. The more expensive one, you can you can just pour down whole bean. But but I mean, consistency and taste is also related to color, and that's another point. I would love to have it automatically measuring the color in line in the bullet, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> not yet. The next question, but you have an IBTS, which is really, in my opinion, a great tool. And and Fais is asking regarding on IBTS, can we make it our main temperature reader? And then maybe oh, yes. I don't know if this is more um, a technical question, so you can answer that. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about the IBTS, maybe you can add some information on how it's working, because I sometimes see in discussions out there that not all people seem to really understand how the IBTS is working and, um, okay. and the, the consistency it's delivering. So maybe you can give some yeah. technical information yeah. on how it's working and your opinion on the precision of the meter. Sure. So, so the IBTS was actually invented because we wanted to be able to roast different batch sizes with the same profile or the same result. And we also wanted to find out, okay, so when is first crack really? 
I mean, first crack is it, that's why we, we say start of first crack, end of first crack, because that is a, a milestone, uh, especially first first crack is is uh, is, uh, is uh, probably the most important milestones in, in coffee roasting, but. But wouldn't it be nice to actually predict when we would have the first crack? And it's uh, evident that with every roaster out there with a normal thermocouple or, or, or this uh, uh, resistant, uh, 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 yeah, negative temperature coefficient <laughs> measurement we have with the with the bean probe, the little the little stick that's that's going into the bean mass. That, that that temperature will change with batch size. Having a very small batch size, then of course it will not measure the, the right temperature of the bean. It will measure a mixture between the bean temperature and the air temperature inside the drum. So having a full batch, then now we are talking because then, then it's, it's surrounded by hot beans all the time and it can actually pick up uh, the kind of right temperature. Then it's also coupled to the front plate. So the front plate will also take out some energy from the beam probe. So it has been a, 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 a really a, a long development story having a beam probe that is small enough not to be destroyed in the big roasters, uh, but also uh, being able to see all the small differences in the beam mass. So going back to the infrared, uh, IPTS, it was actually kind of um, kind of shifting that story completely, saying, "Okay, so why don't we why don't we just measure the surface temperature of the beans with infrared measurement? You can you can if you know the the if you can characterize the kind of uh, uh, the the color that you wanna." measure on and we know the beans having this brownish color uh, in medium roast and then dark roast and so forth so, so we can actually calibrate on the go the infrared measurement so we know plus minus very small fractions of, of degrees to the exact surface temperature and what we found out was that now it's not changing anymore with batch size the real temperature is actually the same. The first crack always happens more or less around 200 de degrees, maybe 2.5. Um, and that's the proof of, of having always the right temperature measurement of your bean mass. On a big in, in industry uh, roaster, it doesn't really matter because you always roast the same uh, batch size. So it's so, so they can easily calibrate. So if my temperature sensor says 187, then that's my first crack. Or if it's 210, whatever, it doesn't really matter because I don't change the batch size. But with the bullet, it's something completely different. And, and uh, the dip in the beginning with a normal temperature probe is actually also an artificial uh, an artifact, sorry, of the measurement way uh, because it will be heated up in the beginning due to the preheating. Then you 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 pour down uh, twenty degrees beans. It will cool off. It will go down, and then you get the turning point. But even the turning point is something strange because it's only okay. So so this is where this probe will actually change from going down to going up and follow the bean mass. So where you see the, the IPTS curve, that will come, of course, from the room temperature when you pour the bean in and then steadily go up because that is the true temperature uh, on the surface of the beans. But we provided both because, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not well accepted, at least not yet, uh, to have a fully uh, infrared uh, a temperature uh, measurement in, in coffee roasting. But at least it's funny to see the, the difference. And then what we do actually with the bean temperature probe is to, to
to use it also for uh, determine uh, when the infrared sensor needs cleaning. So, yep. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. The next question is, um, he says he has quite often, mostly during the Maillard phase, um, mm -hmm. the situation that the rate of rise takes a sharp plunge and then comes back. Not, not a rate of rise crash, just one sharp angle down and yep. then back, yep. back. He does yep. uh, usually 600 gram batches. Is mm -hmm. this something that you know, and what could be the cause of this? Yeah, I, I, I've seen it too. And uh, I mean, that, that it's probably true because the, the IBTS is actually measuring this change. Uh, it could be many things. We have seen before, due to the mechanics in, in the uh, in the roaster, that some of the the fans within the bullet was actually kicking in to cool down the electronics, and we could see a correlation between starting one of the the fans underneath uh, that actually affected a little bit the roasting. And since the the IBTS is very precise and and, and then says immediately what's happening. Uh, this this dip was actually uh, a, a kind of a, a instability, and then soon after, very shortly after, it regains. And and having said that, uh, it's it's not the bean temperature that is changing dramatically. It's the rate of rise, and the rate of rise is the uh, dairy derivative of the temperature it's, it's just a mathematical uh, uh, amplification you could say so when it goes down it just means that the curve is not as steep as it was before it's flattening out a little bit and that is what you see in the rate of rise so so don't be too scared about all those spikes in the rate of rise it's it's uh, simply doing its job and we don't want to even it out. I, I know now I'm drifting away a little bit from, from the question, but, but, but I think it's important also to understand that why we want it not to be evened out as smoothly as you see in, in, in all the software packages, because if you're smoothening it out, you don't know what's happening. And, and then you uh, introduce a time lag of at least 15 seconds, 10, 15 seconds. Uh, that's what happening when you smooth out because you need to smooth over a time period, right? So, so, but, but um, that dip, that does other dips, and that's just before first crack. Actually, because we are not smoothing out, if we, if I didn't know that the first crack was around two hundred degrees, I would actually know it by the chemical, the exothermic. Uh, reaction that is happening just around first crack where, where the bean release energy again because it, it's expanding. Um, I can actually see that by the rate of rise because it's, it's, it's actually, okay, now it's happening and it's, it's going up a little and then 10 seconds after I have first crack. And that's also where you, with the trier, can actually smell those chemicals that is released just prior to the first crack. So a lot of things is happening and it has an effect on the temperature. And I can't explain everything, but uh, uh, certainly uh, there's a, a lot more to learn about this and it, it's all affecting the temperature. But I wouldn't be too worried about those fluctuations in the rate of rise. More, you should look at your, your temperature curve itself. It's actually pretty stable. And then there is a question on the recommended minimum batch size for wood accuracy. So huh. what is the minimum batch size that you recommend? Um, in the manual, it says 300 gram-ish. So is it better to be around 500 grams or is 300 grams okay? Yeah. Yeah, I think from top of my head, we recommend like 350 or something. Uh, at least in, in the writing we had, have had for, for quite some years. Um, um, while, I'm, I'm pausing a little bit here because we have recently had 
uh, some some investigations by by Rod Hoos and and also Morten Munchau and I was also involved myself to try and to determine okay so so if if this bullet could be used a, as a, a sample roaster so so what should we then expect and it, of course if we go as low as 100 gram the bean probe will not be able to do any it won't be able to help you anything but maybe that doesn't really matter because we know what the heat appliance was we know what the airflow was and we can measure the color and we can cop afterwards so so we have actually uh developed uh, a few recipes uh jointly um that is that is actually a pretty good um uh, uh, uh it, it comes pretty pretty close to what you would say a normal sample roaster could ever do and and so I know now I'm, I'm, I'm talking about sample roasting and not, and not uh, small minimum batch size because sample roasting is, is, uh, is a thing you wanna, wanna have in a roastery to actually evaluate the potential of the beans, not necessary to, to drink uh, during the eight o'clock news in the, in the evening. Uh, so, but, but but when I when I talk about sample roasting, it's it's also a matter of okay, so how low can you go and still have a, a even roast? That's what matters, and 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 from that perspective, I I would say um, well. <laughs> Today I wouldn't mind going going down to hundred gram, but I wouldn't rely on the sensors. I would have to develop a, a completely different recipe. But relying on the sensors, I wouldn't go much lower than three hundred. So that's actually my my quick answer. Oh, there are more questions. Could you please explain also technically how how the fun works? I learned to roast on a roast machine. So maybe you can you can say something about the airflow, how the airflow, where is the air coming in and how is it flowing okay. through the machine? Yeah. We can give some information on that. Yeah. So so uh, the airflow there's there's actually uh, several paths within the bullet. Uh, we need airflow all around the electronics to cool it, but that's probably not so interesting uh, for for the. Uh, with regards to the uh, roasting profile. The airflow in the drum is actually uh, being pulled in from the back of the uh, roasting drum. There's actually uh, several holes in the back plate of the roasting drum. And if you see on the cover, I'm, I'm actually pointing to it here. Maybe I can show it. Here you see, you see uh, holes in the side and you had it also on the other side on the uh, chaff box. This is actually where, where it's, it's pulling in air um, uh, from, uh, from, 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 from behind. So, so this is one place it's actually taking, taking air in. But it's also taking air in from from the front, and and so the the uh, the point is that the airflow is first um, going around the outer surface of the drum, so it's so it's heated up by the drum, and since we have no gas here, we have induction heating, so the heat itself is actually starting out coming out of the drum it's not beneath the drum well the the coil the magnetic field that is induced into the the, the drum is actually giving heat from the very inside of the, uh, the drum walls so so the the air first pass around the outer surface of the drum and and being uh, preheated there and then it goes in from the end of the drum and through uh, the drum while it's agitating the beans. And then finally, of course, but you can see that uh, from the bean tube, 
it's actually pulled out from the top uh, front uh, through the tube uh, in, in, the, in the top of the uh, bullet, then right into the chaff box. The, the uh, filter is then holding back all the chaffs and uh, a, a kind of dust cleaned air will, will then uh, go through the impeller and out the exhaust. So that's, that's the way it works. Can you add something about um, on how the airflow is in affecting the roast or how you find yeah. the fan speeds for your perfect roast? Mm. Well, well, I, 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 I don't know about the perfect roast because I probably didn't make it yet. <laughs> uh, but, but I understand the question. Um, there's, there's a certain point uh, airflow wise where the added air will not add to the heating of the beans. It will actually start cooling the beans. But that depends, of course, on, on the speed. So when you have very low air speeds, then you actually move the heat appliance from the drum surface into the bean mass, as well as the beans getting the heat from the drum itself. So it's, it's very difficult to say when that happens, when, when that shifts from heating to cooling. Uh, I think there's this, we have a saying that, that around three, four, that actually happens. So from five, six, seven upwards, we start we start uh, uh, taking the heat out of the drum. But when, but, but, but how to use that in combination with the, with the power settings and all that really depends on what you're roasting. Yeah. And unfortunately, we are already um, close to eight o'clock. And um, there was um, Dario who has raising, had been raising his hands in quite some time. So I would like to then give the last question to Dario. Okay, um, what an honor. <laughs> just, just a quick question. So maybe Mike, the, the last second, uh, last one. Uh, regarding chaff and regarding maintenance, I uh -huh. regularly just remove the front plate. And then what I reckon is that and that uh, on the on the bottom side of the, of the of the drum there is like the dark um, like chaff residue that is like sitting beneath the drum. Would uh -huh. you just recommend to remove it by I don't know tilt it forward and shake the bullet a little bit, which is might be a little bit strange and, and also risky. Yeah. But do, do you just say remove the whole whole um, drum for a certain in a certain period? So, or is it doesn't does make any difference if there is some yeah. dark uh, chaff residue? Yeah. Well, um, when you say dark, is is that more or less black? It's like black. Yes. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Like yeah. Black powder. Yeah. 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 Black yeah. Powder, but that's black powder. I thought so, and and that's uh, I mean, it's it's that is chaff that has been there for quite some some time. And it's it's burned down to to ash really, and and no, I would never recommend to take the uh, the drum out. There's no need to do that. But but uh, what we actually recommend is more or less what you just said, <laughs> to 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 lift it up and and shake it a little, and it 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 feels strange, but it can actually take it, and that's more than enough to actually move it forward. And you can then by hand turn the, the drum a little bit, shake a little bit more. Um, so that's actually what I do here when I, I get a bullet for service. Uh, if I don't have to take the, the drum out, that's how I, I simply do it. And it doesn't really give any resistance either to, to the turning of the, the drum because it's so, it's so fragile. Have been talking for one and a half an hour, giving us so much information um, that I really want to thank you, Stefan, for for all you shared, and that I would at that point then close the session and also thank to all um, the others that have been with us for for the last ninety minutes for all these interesting questions, for the great discussions, and uh, 
thanks a lot to everybody and have a nice evening, all of you. Thank you from yes. me. Thank you so much for having me. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you want to know more about the ILU bullets, then have a look at the other videos in our channel as well. We have quite some information about this machine. Or you can go to our website, roastrevels.com. There you will find roasting profiles and quite some information about the ILU bullet. And of course, you can also order your machine there. In addition to that, if you have any more questions, then always come back to me. You find my contact on roastrevels.com. Thank you.